Do I need to buy this? Do I need to get that, man? What do I do, man? Do I need to, do I need to cut them? What is up, all of you awesome most people? Is my cool here today? Yeah, I rarely ever vlog in public, so I don't know how this is gonna go. It's kind of cold at my but I thought I'll show y'all more. I'll get out the house. Let me run, though. So right now, I'm just taking out my trash. I mean, taking out my grandma's trash for her because that's just what I do for her. And also, I'm gonna get her a meal real quick. So yeah. All right, so back home. It's not really my home, it's my mom's home. I'm not paying the bills around here. The things I wish I knew before getting dreadlocks. Now, I'll go ahead and show y'all where the whole dreadlocking process started. So take a walk with me. It all started in this room. But it all started over here in my bed. Or it wasn't even in this bed, it was in a different bed. But it all started in this room. One day I was just twisting my hair with my fingers, which is something I will always do, but this time I was actually like, you know what, I want to try to give myself, because people used to call it like twisties. I was like, all right, I'm going to try to give myself twisties. And I was literally all day doing that. I had to go to the store. I was in the store twisting my hair. But then one night I was like, you know what, I'm going to actually start this whole process. I've been wanting to do it for about a year now, and I'm actually going to start doing it. So let's do it. So I ran into this bathroom right here, and I started towel rubbing my hair. I'll actually show y'all the exact towel that I used too. It was this exact towel right here and I'm not even gonna lie to you, I did not know how to use it. I was just rubbing it around my head. It wasn't going right. It was like sliding all over the place. It was taking forever. I was like in here for a good hour just to get like some twist for me. And it, it wasn't it wasn't the best thing ever. I'm actually gonna take this segment off. But it wasn't the best thing ever. Here's one picture of the first day I started with the towel, but then few weeks later, I said, this towel is not working, so <laughs> I need to get a sponge. So I got a sponge. I believe this was the sponge I started with, and I started with this side, I think. I also used the flat side. I, I used basically this side until it was broken, and I used the other, then I started using the other side. Then I got another sponge. It had like the spikes on it, but then all the, a lot of those eventually broke off, so I just used the other side. <laughs> yeah, I got like three sponges, cause you know, my hair was that rough. But anyways, when I used the sponge, I found out it worked so much better. And then blah, 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 I go on and out. I don't even know what I'm talking about my whole dreadlock journey. But anyways, one of the things I wish I knew when I first started is that towel rub does not work as good as sponge rub. Now, a lot of y'all probably gonna get mad at me at that. Hey, just for me, it, it did not work that great. I don't know why, but when I used a sponge, it worked so much better and the twist came out so much, the twist uh, formed so much faster. Let me get out of here, so echoey. But the twist formed so much faster when I used the um, the sponge. So that's one thing I wish I would've knew because I basically wasted like my first week just trying to, or maybe like the first three days using the towel, which it did not work that well. I mean, here's just one disclaimer. I honestly have no regret to my whole drill -like journey. And I'm not saying that just to be I don't know, cliche or something like I have just the perfect dreadlock journey. But honestly, I have no regrets. I mean, I loved every single stage of my hair and I'm loving my hair now. Even though I barely pay attention to it outside of YouTube, but that's that's besides the point. But something that's beneficial for you to know in the beginning stages was knowing that it takes only like four months for your hair to start locking up. In my case, it didn't really affect me that much because all I saw were little twists forming on my head and I was satisfied to be completely honest. Because in my head, I already knew it was a process, but I, I was so excited for the whole process. If anything even looked like it was trying to turn into dredge, I was happy with that. But for a lot of people, if I feel like if they would know 
how long it actually takes for your hair to lock up or the time frame, then they will be more at ease. Cause a lot of people, they get dressed for like a week and they get twist for like a week and they're like, oh, my hair isn't locky, man. What do I do? Do I need to buy this? Do I need to get that, man? What do I do, man? Do I need to, do I need to cut them? And it's like, no, 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 hold up, hold up. Chill out. It's not that deep. All it takes is patience. One thing that's so beneficial for y'all to know in the beginning stages is that it takes patience. A lot of things takes patience with dreadlocks. Like if you don't have patience, you can easily destroy your dreadlocks because you do you either do too much to it, you're just cut them because you're not, not satisfied with them, even though you had them for only like a month, then you're mad because they're not 50 inches long yet it takes time but not only that another thing you have to realize is people will look at you different not necessarily in a bad way sometimes in a bad way but just know people are going to look at you different but especially if you're in freeform dreads or semi freeform or whatever or dreads that just look wild know that people are probably going to look at you differently and you just gonna have to you know get through that another thing now this is actually something i wish i would have known because all the other things i kind of knew already but i'm just it's just beneficial for other people to know Know. but this is what i actually wish i would have known before i get before getting dreadlocks is that it isn't easy if you have like a full head of dreads to convert to a high top set of dreads especially if your dreads are not sectioned out because for me i'll just show you how it looks see how it's like a, the parietal ridge is what it's called like where the dreads separate from the fade you see how it's like kind of jagged that's because i actually had like a full head of dreads with a high taper but then i eventually just got a whole high top set of dreads and so we had to cut some dreads off but it's so jagged and some dreads were lower than others and you couldn't just cut right into it because then he would nick the dread so some dreads were a little off so he just had to cut around it because if he would have cut through he would have nicked it so with your dreads not being sectioned out in a straight line around there and you want to get a high top fade from a full set of dreads it's possible but just know it might be a little jagged if your sections aren't sectioned out or if they aren't sectioned out to the point where it will be like a straight line which it isn't that big of a deal because you know i still think my hair looks cool but that's just one thing i kind of wish i would have known that's just a little tip but another thing i wish i would have known not to twist my hair so much if y'all don't know what i'm talking about i'm talking about this dreadlock right here and you see it's like why it's so short because it, it fell out yeah Fell out about like, it was within, it was somewhere within the like five to eight months. And I was in the shower and a glob of hair came out and I'm like, what is this? That looked in, yeah, my hair was way shorter right here. Which a good thing it fell out early. So it isn't, I mean, it still is very, very, very far behind the others, but it's not even that big of a deal to be honest. But that happened because I twisted this one so much. You know those dreads? that you just or those twists that you just twist in class when you're bored and stuff it was one of those so i was just always twisting it. and plus it's right on my temple which is where the hair is the most thin and the most susceptible to breakage and thinning and all that type of stuff on top of that it was very very skinny because i was twisting it so much and it was such a, a small section of hair anyways that eventually it just broke off i even think maybe i crochet hooked it as well which may have broke some hair inside i don't know but i twisted it so much it just broke off so that's one of the biggest tips I can give you is do not twist your hair too much like do like leave your hair alone that will help it grow first off usually the less you do to your hair the more your hair will grow plus you don't got to twist your hair too much because I will make it thin out and there'll be so much tension you get hair loss and then maybe some dreads will fall out I don't know so don't twist your hair too much and what I mean by that is don't just sit in your bed all day just twisting every dread super tight on your head don't do that you can do that sometimes but just do it in moderation but yeah oh yeah one of the other things i wish i knew before getting dreadlocks is the tapered hairline now y'all see my hairline right now i mean it's a few days after a haircut like in the beginning stages i was sponging my hair but i wanted a tapered hairline so i'll just leave the front puffy so then i finally got like a small tapered hairline which is all i wanted i'm glad that's all i wanted because like i do not like those like one inch tapered hairlines but i like just like a little taper right there my barber gave that to me but eventually i guess he like forgot he gave me a tapered hairline and he never like cut it again and plus my hair was really puffy at that time and i got no retwist so maybe he was just trying to he was like confused on where to cut like he didn't want to nick any of my dreads off and this was a while back but eventually that tapered hairline grew out and out and out and it was like really long and went like all the way down to like maybe my eyebrow maybe maybe not maybe not that long but it was long and eventually as y'all saw in that one video i got some trimmers which isn't even the correct way to even cut your hair but i got some trimmers and i cut down 
on the hair. Then gave myself a basically a tapered hairline for the first time. It was weird, it was scary. I don't know if it was gonna work, but it did work. But then yeah, that's where this tapered hairline came from. But it's way easier to just get a tapered hairline beforehand because it'll make everything look much more clean. And you don't risk nicking any dreadlocks or anything like that if you get a tapered hairline before getting dreadlocks. Which if you don't know the benefit of a tapered hairline, first off, a lot of people just like it because of style, because it allows for a really, really sharp lineup as well. It helps to not have a lot of tension on your hairline. So this is especially good if you're a person who gets a lot of retwists. You don't always want all that tension on the on your hairline because the hairline it tends to be, you know, thin as well or really sensitive. And sometimes that can cause receding hairlines and all that stuff. And the taper hairline just make sure that your dreads start behind your hairline instead of like right at your hairline. Which also prevents you from if your if your dreads were actually starting at your hairline. You wouldn't be able to get that sharp on lineups because every time you get a lineup, it will nick your dreads a little bit, unless you're using baby hairs or something. So that's just something I wish I would have known before you're getting dreadlocks. But one more thing I wish I would have known before you're getting dreadlocks is that you're going to miss the beginning stages because I miss the beginning stages a lot, especially like the point where my hair isn't even locked up where it's just sponged, but it's like in that stage where it's trying to form into dreadlocks. I really like that stage. It was one of my favorite st stages. I loved when my hair stood up. That's actually how I wore it for a very long time until I actually just started getting retwists and as you see my hair is actually standing up now because I really like when it stands up and just know that it isn't always about your hair getting longer I really I think this stage of my hair is the best it's ever been like hands down but I still do miss the beginning stages and sometimes I wish I would have appreciated them more even though I appreciated every stage of my hair but I recommend that all of you who are in the beginning stages appreciate your hair where it's at because first off that won't only make the process go way quicker because you're more content with it but it also just make you more happy with your hair and you'll be able to get more out of your hair even though hair is such a small thing i don't recommend that you idolize hair and make that your only thing you care about in life because outside of youtube i barely even pay attention to my hair to be completely honest just appreciate your hair just be happy with it don't pay too much attention to it but just be happy with it because once that stage goes you're going to look back and be like man i really underappreciated my hair even when i look back at my retwist when they were super short i was like man it actually looked really cool but i never really liked the way the retwists looked i just thought they looked weird because i wasn't used to myself having a retwist but looking back i'm like wow that looked really cool so yeah just make sure you appreciate the beginning stages because that will help a lot but anyways that's all i have to say for this video if y'all liked it please make sure i like it if you want to see more videos from me in the future please make sure i subscribe and turn on post notifications so i'll never miss out on another video from me in the future and if you have any comments like what are things you wish you known before getting dreadlocked or just anything in the comments make sure you comment that down but anyways with that being said i love you all and i'll see you all in the next video